This is just a quick video of the bodywork repairs carried out by Dennis at Classic and Retro Restorations. If you've been following my journey so far, you'll probably remember that I attempted some of the bodywork repairs myself and failed miserably. I'll not recap on what happened as it's covered on previous episodes, but luckily Dennis came to the rescue. There's this magical unexplained force that surrounds a Classic Mini that convinces you that if you buy one, you'll suddenly have all the necessary skills to strip it down, carry out all the repairs, recondition an engine, paint the body shell and build the car back up to be just like it left the showroom floor. Some select few do succeed, but many, like myself, fall into this trap and eventually have to seek the help of a professional. I had a lot of self-belief in my abilities, but reality hit me very quickly. My bodywork repairs were very amateurish and they were unsafe. Even a Mini has the potential to zip down the road at the national speed limit and the last thing I wanted was for the panels to start popping off when I was driving down the motorway. The car needed a lot of work doing to it. Nearly every single panel had a hole in it and some panels just weren't savable and would need to be replaced. The front end was misaligned and poor previous repairs had caused some safety issues with the front and the side of the car. There was a split in the inner wing and both air panels were either dented or they were rotten. The whole right hand side was literally ready to peel away from the car, partly due to some poor welded repairs and also because of the rot around the seams. It really is hard to see the extent of the damage or the rot on the pictures because it doesn't allow you to see how threadbare the metal is, but some of the panels that might look okay from a distance were just unrepairable. The right hand side literally just pulled away from the car with a good pull and where a previous repair had been made it wasn't properly welded to the car and as a result the door dropped about an inch and wouldn't close properly. The back end had lots of holes, the gutter was rotten but probably one of the better looking panels on the car although the parcel shelf was questionable. The boot was really bad, the metal was so thin that you couldn't really put any pressure on the metal without holes appearing. There's also quite a lot of dents in this area and a few holes look like they've been added that weren't supposed to be there. The floor and many parts of the inside have been poorly patched up. There were oversills fitted and it doesn't take a professional to work out that this floor was beyond repair. So the first thing that Dennis did was attach the car to the rolling jig, assess what work was required and brace the bodywork to prevent the shell from being deformed when the metal was removed. A lot of the floor was removed and this also gave access to the tour board which I had previously attempted to repair myself. I had made a bit of a mess with this but it was soon fixed and fitted properly. The tour board did Heritage made and Heritage now only manufactured the tour boards that were designed for the later minis. So it did need a bit of altering to fit the existing bulkhead which was still the original from the 80s. Once the tour board was secured a new boot floor was installed which sorted out a lot of the problems very quickly. It felt very strange to be looking at a boot floor with no rust. A whole new floor was fitted next. Although my car is an 81, Heritage only had the more modern floor available, but there was no issues with the fit. It wasn't welded in straight away, just fixed in temporarily. There were still a few jobs to do before it was welded in place. Heritage used the original presses to manufacture the panels. The original presses were altered to manufacture the later style floors, and that's why the older style floor wasn't available when I bought mine. The back end was replaced along with a new parcel shelf. The previous parcel shelf wasn't rusty at all, but it had been cut for speakers and the holes were not cut central, and the jagged edges were quite dangerous, so it was easier to just replace the shelf. Now, I was tempted to have the Mark 1 back end fitted, as I'm planning to style the car similar to the Heritage Racers, but I ended up choosing the relevant panel for the car's year just to make things easier and help reduce any potential issues that could occur in the future. 
front end was removed along with the wings and the flitch panel and the scuttle was marked out where the repairs were needed. The inner wing was repaired where it had split and the other inner wing was also savable, which was good because it still shows the original identification for the car as does the scuttle panel. So it was nice to be able to have those still on the car and help retain some of its original identity. A new side panel was needed as the old one had completely rotted away. This also solved the issue of the rotted gutter as the gutter forms part of this side panel. The new panel should also mean that the door will no longer be a problem when opening and closing. The flitch panels were repaired and the vents left exposed this time as I'd like to refit the air vents that had previously been blocked up. Two new wings and the bonnet were fitted and Dennis spent some time ensuring that everything lined up perfectly. The car has the odd Magnum and M machine panel but the majority of panels are heritage and were supplied by Minisport at Padium. The heritage panels, especially at the front end, seem to give a much better fit. This was also a good time to test fit the doors. One of the original doors I had reskinned by the mini door company, but the other door just wasn't savable, so I bought a used door for a friend who lives local. And this is from a slightly newer mini, so there are some slight differences. When everything lined up perfectly, the panels were all welded on and it was time to start on some of the smaller repairs. Several of the repairs were needed to the rear quarter panel, so it made more sense to just put a new panel on. The smaller repairs included fixing the holes in the wheel arches, repairing the bottom of the companion bins, adding the petrol tank bracket and the battery air stud, and it was just a case of going around the car and repairing any small holes that shouldn't really be there, and making sure that everything is ready for the next stage, which is paint preparation. Dennis is fortunate to have a quality paint shop next door, so the car will be wheeled across on a dolly ready for the painters. But before it goes to the sprayers, Dennis protects the entire underside of the car by preparing the surface and applying a protective coating. Now I'm a perfectionist and a worrier, which isn't a good combination, especially when it comes to owning a car with a design from the 1950s. So a huge thank you to Dennis for all the bodywork repairs, the regular photo updates, and for pulling up with my constant daily text messages and daft questions. Pictures only tell half the story and don't show all the hard work that goes into restoring a shell like this, as many of you who restore bodywork will know. So the car now goes off to be painted, and we'll be back at Dennis's in a few weeks time, when work will begin rebuilding the car and finally getting it back on the road.